most of our favorite characters from the original Seven Deadly Sins show up in the sequel eventually, including Meliodas, Spawn, Gother, Tristan, Lancelot, and many more. But at first, the main hero we follow is Percival, a new character who seems to be a regular human, but who is actually something very different. Percival is actually completely different from all the beings we've met in the series so far, and that is why he turns out to be so incredibly overpowered. If you're confused, don't worry, I will explain it all in this video, so stick around until the end for the shocking twist. You guys know how this works, if you enjoy our 7 Deadly Sins and 4 Nights of Apocalypse videos and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment for that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to help us hit 2 million subscribers here on the channel, do me a huge favor and subscribe. We're literally only a few hundred subscribers away as I am recording this video, we could hit it any minute, so please do me a huge favor and subscribe right now. Okay, so the prophecy about the Four Knights of the Apocalypse describes the Knight of Death as a boy with verdant wing-like hair. That boy is Percival, who has green wing-shaped hair and who looks like he's about 10 even though he's actually 16. I guess in that sense he is quite similar to Meliodas, the hero of the original series. Percival spent the vast majority of his life on top of a gigantic pillar-shaped mountain called God's Finger. He lived there with his grandpa, Varghese, and there was no one else up there with them. They were essentially completely isolated from the outside world, and that was very much intentional. Percival's grandpa was actually hiding Percival from the outside world, and we'll talk more about why later on in the video. God's Finger is definitely an interesting place to grow up. It is so tall that the tip is located above the clouds, and from the top of God's Finger you can actually see the shadow of Sky Island, which is the home of the Celestials from the Prisoners of the Sky movie. At first we were told that Percival's father was a holy knight of Camelot named Ironside, a man who betrayed King Arthur along with Percival's grandfather and then disappeared. Ironside disappeared and Percival's grandpa took him to God's Finger and raised him there alone. Percival's grandpa would go on to train Percival from the age of 3 in order to turn him into an extremely powerful fighter. Percival's calm and peaceful existence is suddenly shattered one day when his grandfather is murdered at the hands of a knight in red armor who showed up on God's Finger in a floating boat. The red knight fatally wounded Varghese and left Percival for dead. But miraculously Percival survived. And as his grandpa is dying, he tells Percival that the Red Knight is actually Ironside, his father. From that point onward, Percival is determined to find Ironside and punish him for what he did to his grandpa. He also wants answers from his father about the true circumstances of his birth and about the real reason why Ironside killed his grandpa and tried to kill Percival as well. Percival's grandpa's claim that Ironside is Percival's father is only kind of true, like it's not literally true, but I will explain all of that later on in the video, so stick around. After his grandpa's death, Percival finally leaves God's finger for the first time. Because he grew up in isolation, Percival is extremely curious about the outside world, and since he has no experience socializing with people other than his grandpa, he is initially excited by everything and he is very naive and trusting of strangers. At certain times, this gets Percival into serious trouble, but this pure and innocent outlook on life also leads him to make some incredible friends and allies. Our first real hint that Percival is something more than an ordinary human is his extremely unique magic, which is called hope. Hope is a type of magic that is powered by the hope of the user's allies and by the faith that the user's allies place in him. It's like the author of the manga took the idea of the power of friendship and decided to turn it into an actual magic power in that world. Hope is a very rare type of magic and it is classified as hero type magic. This is a magic type that only manifests incredibly rarely in a very small number of people. Hope allows Percival to generate a magical aura around his body or parts of his body and he can then manipulate this aura in many different ways. The aura increases his physical strength when he attacks, it allows him to defend himself by acting as a shield and it also has the ability to heal extremely serious injuries almost instantly. The aura can also change shape depending on the situation that Percival is in. For instance, the aura can turn into a weapon or it can take the shape of a pair of wings and this allows Percival to literally fly. Percival is also able to channel his magic into real weapons that he can then use himself, and the main weapon that he uses is actually Dragon Handle, a fragment of the Coffin of Eternal Darkness that Meliodas had used as his own weapon back in the original series. So yeah, there are definitely some similarities between Percival and Meliodas. The aura produced by Percival's magic has the ability to absorb the magic attacks of others and shoot them back at the attacker. 
And Percival is also able to create a bunch of chibi shadow clones that have a will of their own and that will do whatever they can to help Percival get out of even the tightest situations. The chibi shadow clones also have the power to heal injuries, and this includes the injuries of Percival as well as the injuries of his allies. Because Percival's magic has a will of its own, it was even able to literally resurrect Percival and bring him back to life after he was outright killed by his enemies. However, this ability to defy death only applies to Percival, and so far he has not been able to resurrect other people after they already died, even if he desperately wanted to do it. But Percival's power isn't all light, hope and friendship. His magic also possesses a darker side, such as the ability to instantly drain all the fluids out of a living being just by touching them, essentially mummifying the part of that person's body that Percival touched directly. Percival showcased this power for the first time when he was filled with despair because he wrongly believed that his friends had just been killed. He essentially lost it and went into a dangerous berserk mode, kind of like Assault Mode Meliodas in the original series. Normal healing magic does not have the power to alter the effects of this strange mummification attack. And only Percival's own hope magic can reverse the mummification process after Percival finally comes to his senses. In addition to his unbelievably rare and powerful magic, Percival was always far stronger and far more resistant to damage than an ordinary human. There was always something different about Percival, something special and almost superhuman. And that of course led to a lot of speculation about Percival's true race and identity. I mean, he has enhanced resistance against drugs and other types of potions. He has built in resistance to the miasma of the demon realm. He also has an above average lung capacity, due in part to the fact that he grew up at a very high altitude on top of God's finger. And although at first you might be tempted to think that maybe Percival's extraordinary strength comes from the fact that he got intense physical training since he was 3 years old, in the end that is only a small part of the story. We eventually learn that Percival has the ability to speak the language of the demon clan, although he doesn't even know why he knows this language. His knowledge of the demon tongue on top of his resistance to the miasma of the demon realm led to a lot of people speculating that Percival might actually be some sort of powerful demon. But the truth is even crazier than that, because Percival turns out to be something else entirely. He speaks the demon language because he spent some time in the demon realm as a very young child, but he is actually a completely different being from everything we've seen so far. Percival is none other than a life spirit inside a human body. Remember when I said that Ironside was kind of Percival's father, but not really? Well, Percival was born as the seventh prince of some unknown kingdom, but he actually died as a baby when the wagon he was traveling in fell off a cliff. Ironside found the body of the child and he took it to Camelot. He then used forbidden magic to turn the body into a vessel for a powerful life spirit. A life spirit is a being of pure energy with no shape or personality, and these life spirits are what make all life possible, including the lives of all the races in that world. Life spirits are said to be pieces of the Great One, so I guess we could think of them as like pieces of God or something along those lines. Now normally a life spirit has no personality or individuality, so Ironside wanted to use the life spirit to bring the deceased baby back to life and give it what is essentially an immortal body. A human body that is possessed by a life spirit will be virtually indestructible, and that is exactly what Ironside wanted, because his own biological son Diodora was sick and dying. Ironside expected that Percival's body infused with the life spirit would become an empty vessel that he can then transfer Diodora's soul into. However, after Percival's body was revived by the life spirit, Percival somehow gained self-awareness and individuality. It might have been because Varghese showed love to him and refused to allow him to simply become a vessel for someone else, or it might have been a combination of several factors. But at the end of the day, Ironside's plan backfired. The vessel he created for his son became a completely different person. The person we know today as Percival a life spirit who inhabits a human body. Varghese then took Percival and escaped with him in order to protect him and prevent him from becoming a vessel for Ironside's real son. And that is why Percival's grandpa kept him on top of God's finger for so long. He was hiding Percival away because he didn't want his own unique personality to be forcibly erased by Ironside in order to make room for Diodora. As of the making of this video, even in the manga we only got very little information about life spirits. 
They appear to be a powerful magical force of nature, and normally they don't have a will or a personality. They just exist, and they power all the life in the world, kind of like the sun. Percival is unique because he is the first example of a life spirit with a personality. But needless to say, the power of a life spirit is extremely mysterious and unstable. When all of Percival's little chibi clones tapped into the hopes of all the demons in the demon realm, they were able to fuse into a single, normal-sized clone of Percival who is able to fight in Percival's place when he himself becomes too tired. This large clone is sometimes referred to as Zarura Endu, and he is a being of pure magical energy that seems to be practically immune to all forms of physical attack. Zarura Endu says that life spirits have the ability to use the hope of others to spread life, but they also have the ability to use the despair of others to spread death. So again, this power is very unstable, and although it can do a lot of good, it could also potentially do a lot of horrible things if it gets out of control. Percival is aware of this, and he eventually comes to the conclusion that if he keeps going on the path that he is going right now, he will bring a terrible fate upon all of his precious friends and comrades. Because of this, Percival decides that an unnatural creature like him shouldn't even exist and he ultimately decides to abandon his human vessel. That said, Percival's body remains alive even after the life spirit leaves it, so you better believe that Percival will return eventually. Now you know the shocking truth about Percival the Knight of Death and his true identity. But are you wondering about the other three Knights of the Apocalypse? If so, check out my video that explains all four of them and the prophecy itself. Link on screen and in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more 7 Deadly Sins and 4 Nights of the Apocalypse videos here on the channel, leave a quick like to let me know. And we are only a few hundred subscribers away from 2 million. Do me a huge favor and subscribe right now.